Good morning and um, welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. Uh, today what we will do, we will move to a new class of natural products called triquinanes and after a brief introduction um, we will talk about total synthesis of at least one such triquinane and the next few lectures we will discuss more about various total synthesis of several triquinanes. So, what are these triquinanes? As you know, we have seen many natural products having 5 membered as one of the key rings in the natural product, and this 5 membered ring can be called as quinane. There are 5 carbon atoms, so you can call that as quinane. If 2 5 membered rings are fused, then you can call that as diquinine, okay. two 5 membered rings are fused, so you can call them as diquinine. And if 3 5 membered rings are fused, okay. if 3 5 membered rings are fused, then there are 3 possibilities. Okay. One, they are fused in a linear fashion. Okay. If they are fused in linear fashion, then they are called linear triquinine. Okay. And on the diquinine, if you add one more 5 membered ring in an angular fashion, you can see this is the diquinine and you are adding one more 5 membered ring in an angular fashion, then they are called angular triquinanes. Then the third ring, third 5 membered ring, if you attach in such a way that if they, if they look like propylene, so then that is the third category propylene type triquinanes. And when you talk about linear triquinanes, then there are two types, one cis anti cis. If you look at the relationship between these two rings, they are cis. However, the relationship between the first and third ring that is anti. However, the relationship between the second and third ring is cis. So that is why this is called cis anti cis. And then you also have cis sin cis system. Okay. So, when you look at many natural products belonging to linear triquinanes, you will see both, both skeleton present. Okay. Likewise, you can see if you look at the linear triquinanes closely, the core structure has 11 carbon atoms. This is a 5 membered ring, this is a 5 membered ring and there is one extra carbon atom which is also part of the 5 membered ring. So, there are 11 carbons which forms the core structure of any triquinine. So, the remaining 4 carbon atoms because they are sesquiterpenes, so the remaining 4 carbon atoms are distributed across this 11 carbon atoms. The way they are distributed, way you have oxygen functionalities, you can see several linear triquinanes. See if you look at the difference between hirsutine and capnelline, okay. the hirsutine has exocyte double bond here whereas capnelline has here. And then hirsutine has a dimethyl group here whereas it has dimethyl group here. So like this subtle changes will lead to different natural products. This is based on their way they cyclize uh, during the biosynthesis and accordingly you know you see different natural products and quite a few are highly oxygenated as you can see in acetic acid, coriolane, there are 3 to 4 oxygen atoms present in such natural products. Coming to angular triquinanes, again angular triquinanes of uh, skeleton wise they are of 4 types. One for example, if you look at this isocomane angular triquinanes there are 4 methyl groups in that 2 are angular methyl group, okay. 2 are angular methyl groups. The remaining 2 they are attached to a tertiary carbon atom, they are attached to tertiary carbon atom. And in the case of sylphenine, you have 1 angular methyl, methyl group, 
one methyl group which is attached to tertiary carbon atom and then you have two methyl groups they are gem dimethyl and they are cotton ethyl. Okay. Same way pentalinine you can see two quaternary methyl groups and two methyl groups which are attached to tertiary carbon atom, two methyl groups which are attached to tertiary carbon atoms and sylphy perfolane type angular triquinines it has only one angular methyl group the remaining three methyl groups are attached to tertiary carbon atoms. Okay. And there are many angular triquinanes, so here are some uh, alpha isocomine, beta isocomine, sylphenine and so on. Okay. We will try to cover total synthesis of some of them and as you know each group would have used different key reactions to make this natural product. So over a period while talking about various total synthesis of triquinanes you also will know or you also will get an idea how such molecules can be synthesized using different key reactions and different key strategies. Coming to the third one that is the propylene type triquinanes, the third ring okay, you can see first the basic diquinanes almost same, only the third one is different and some of them are oxygenate. Okay. So for example, this one modifying epoxide and polycarol. So, these three are oxygenated, the basic one which is just modifying having only a double bond. Okay. Now, what we will do, we will talk about the total synthesis of uh, alpha and beta isocomines today and the, these isocomines were isolated from isocoma by T and a closer look at this molecules, you can see that there are three contiguous quaternary centers. Okay. One, two, three. There are three contiguous quaternary carbons. Okay. So, always construction of quaternary carbons is not easy. Okay. And particularly if you have to construct stereoselectively, it is uh, really a tough job. And in addition, you have one chiral center. The difference between alpha and beta isocomine is the position of the double bond. In the case of alpha isocomine, you have internal double bond, whereas in the case of beta isocomine, you have external double bond. So, first let us start with the synthesis of isocomine by Michael Pirang and Michael Pirang uh, used a uh, used an intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycle addition uh, as the key step. And this is the structure of uh, isocomine. He also used one more key reaction that is ring expansion under acidic condition. The first, uh, first key reaction is intramolecular 2 plus, 2 plus 2 photocyclo addition and the second one is acid catalyzed ring expansion of 4 umbel ring to 5 umbel ring. So, according to um, Pirang, isocomine can be easily obtained from this carbocation. So, if you can generate this is an intermediate, okay, it is not a you know precursor, this is an intermediate, this carbocation if you can generate that should lead to isocomine. Okay. He thought this carbocation normally what you would have thought this carbocation can be obtained from a tertiary alcohol or a double bond exocyclic double bond. Okay. Simply you know from synthetic point of view it is easy to think that this carbocation can be generated from the corresponding alcohol. But what he thought was that is a key thing that if you have like this system then you know wagner mervin type rearrangement can occur. This for this bond can migrate. If this can migrate, that will lead to this angular triquinane with a carbocation. Once you have this carbocation, obviously loss of proton will give the natural product. Then how do you generate this carbocation? Suppose if you have a ketone, then the ketone you can add either methylgrignard or you can do a Wittig followed by protonation would, should generate 
that tertiary kappa cation, isn't it? And how do you get this tricyclic compound? So when you look at this four membered ring, immediately you should think about two plus two photocycloaddition. Again, there are two possibilities. One, you can break this way. Okay, that is if you call this as breaking A bonds. The other one, you you can break the vertical one. So vertically, so that you can call it as breaking B bonds. So what he did was he broke the bonds B to form the four membered ring. So that way, this became the precursor. Now, if you look at this, this can be easily made by simple acid catalyzed rearrangement. Again, so if you have this enone, okay, if you have this enone, then you add this grignard. So this grignard will add one two, and then you will get an alcohol here. Then simple acid catalyzed hydrolysis. will transposition the oxygen okay so that way you can easily get this product in two steps from this okay so this was the uh, you know simple retrosynthesis planned by pirin and let us see how this synthesis worked out he started with the commercially available 2 methyl cyclohexane 13 diene he started with 2 methyl cyclohexane 13 diene this on treatment with paratoluene sulfonic acid and methanol it will give enol ether so as you know when you have 13 diketone 13 diketone also can exist in corresponding enol form so that is basically he methylated that okay the enol is methylated under acidic condition now if you do lda methylated treatment you can introduce a methyl group here because that's the only place it can generate anion and then quench with the methyl iodide okay so the fragment a is ready now what you need is you need to make the bromide and then add that grignard to this enone so for that you started from this gamma keto ester then you do the wittig so wittig will go selectively to the ketone to get the double bond and reduction of ester with lah you get the corresponding alcohol now convert that into bromide and then make grignard of that bromide and add to this eno so that will give you that tertiary alcohol so now simple acid treatment first it will make this as a good leaving group then this lone pair will come and the water molecule will go that will lead to the key precursor which is required for the intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycloaddition okay so now once you made this key precursor what he did he tried the key pot photochemical 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction and this molecule also one should draw in such a way that one can easily explain the stereochemical outcome of the 2 plus 2 photocycloaddition so you draw the cyclohexenone in such a way that put the methyl group in pseudo equatorial position okay now when you bring this when you bring this appended side chain for 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition this methyl group should point upwards okay that way if you keep this properly then you will get this stereo chemistry okay if you look at this compound this methyl group is in equatorial position and when this double bond comes this methyl group goes to beta because that side only hydrogen is there isn't it that side only hydrogen is there so so methyl group will try to go to axial or beta okay and during the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition this methyl group will go to alpha and this molecule can be redrawn like this okay i'll leave it for a few seconds for you to visualize how i have drawn this structure into this is it easy to visualize so this five membered ring is alpha this methyl group is beta and this methyl group is alpha okay 
So, the first key reaction he could do successfully that is the intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycloaddition worked very well to give that tricyclic compound. Now, what he needs to do is you have to add a methyl grignard or methyl lithium to get the tertiary alcohol followed by acid treatment should generate the carbocation then the carbocation will undergo Wagner variant type rearrangement to give isochromium. So, he took this ketone and treated with methyl magnesium bromide and also methyl lithium. Unfortunately, these two did not give the corresponding tertiary alcohol. What happened? Methyl magnesium bromide and methyl lithium they both acted as base and they did not act as a nucleophile. Only enolate was formed in while treating with methyl magnesium bromide and methyl lithium. So, so alternatively it is very easy you can do a Wittig reaction. So, simple methyl Wittig gave the precursor to wagner mirvin rearrangement. So, once you had the double bond treat with paratoluene sulfonic acid that gave straight away isochromine. Okay. Now, let us see the mechanism how this was rearranged to isochromine. First the protonation of this double bond took place to give the tertiary carbocation. Okay. Now, you have two bonds which can migrate one is bond A the other one is bond B. If bond A migrates that will lead to isochromine. If bond B migrates that will lead to some other natural product. Okay. So, assume that bond B migrates then you will get this skeleton. Okay. You can see this bond migrates here and that will lead to positive charge here. Okay. Now, if bond A migrates, it is very simple that will straight away give the isochromine skeleton and simple loss of proton will give you isochromine. However, if you look at this intermediate okay, which is obtained by the migration of bond B. Okay. Now, again this particular bond, this particular bond if it migrates, if it migrates what will you get is you will get the same intermediate. So, essentially it does not matter whether bond A migrates or bond B migrates, what you get is the same intermediate which upon loss of proton will give the natural product which is isochrome. Okay. So, this is one of the real classical total synthesis and it is a single author paper by Michael Pirang on the total synthesis of isochromine. So, in the total synthesis which was reported in 1979, um, he started with commercially available 2 methyl cyclohexane 1 3 diome and the key reactions involved are 2 plus 2 photocycle addition and wagner mirvin rearrangement. Overall, uh, the total synthesis involved 6 longest linear steps, 6 longest linear steps and the yield was 42 percent which is quite quite high considering this uh, angular triconines. The second synthesis which was reported by FIDER and here again uh, uh, the key reaction was ring enlargement and also wagner mirvin type rearrangement. This is the key reaction. So, if, if you look at this molecule you can see two four membered rings is not it, two four membered rings spirofused and one of the four membered rings is spirofused with a five membered ring this upon treatment with acid ok, this upon treatment with acid gives isochromine ok. This is a very very interesting uh, sequence of reaction involving wagner mirvin type rearrangement ok. Let us see how he achieved this. The retrosynthesis wise you know isochromine can be obtained in one step from this tertiary alcohol and this as you know if you have a ketone ok, if you have a ketone you can introduce a one, met one, one methyl group here by treating with LDA methyl iodide and if you add a methyl grignard to this ketone you get the corresponding tertiary alcohol. So, in two steps you can get the precursor for the acid catalyzed rearrangement. Now, how you get this cyclopentanol 
as you know if you have an epoxide if you have an epoxide epoxides are known to undergo ring enlargement or ring enlargement rearrangement okay so a four member ring with an exo epoxide can undergo rearrangement under acidic condition to give five member ring see for example if you use a lewis acid here so what will happen this can open up and this bond can migrate to get the corresponding five member kit okay and epoxides can be easily made from the corresponding double bond and the double bond can be made from the ketone using wittig reaction and finally the starting material for the whole scheme on total synthesis isocomine bifidar is cyclobutane having an exocyclic double bond with two methyl groups okay so this is a starting material let us see how he successfully achieved the total synthesis of isocomine using this acid catalyzed ring rearrangement first he started with the acetone you can imagine for the synthesis of isocomine the starting material is acetone okay simple acetone which is a solvent now you do a wittig reaction uh, with cyclobutane derived elide you get the first starting material okay next you have to do another 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction this time you do 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with uh, dichloroketene so if you look at um, pirang's total synthesis also there was a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction here also 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction in pirang's isocomine synthesis he has used intramolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction here it is intermolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction with dichloroketene as you know dichloroketene can be easily generated from either dichloroacetyl chloride by treating with uh, um, triethylamine or tri uh, trichloroacetyl chloride if you take trichloroacetyl chloride and treat with zinc that also will give the dichloroketene so this will give you this pyrofused bicyclic system so now you have two four membered ring two four membered rings spirofused next what you don't want is this two chlorine isn't it the chlorine was used to keep the ketene stable okay so once that served its purpose the chlorine should be removed so normally it is done by treating with zinc and acetic acid so you have the spirofused bicyclic ring next again do another wittig with the same cyclobutane uh, bromocyclobutane and uh, treat with triphenylphosphine and then butyl lithium you get the the wittig product this looks very cute this molecule looks very nice you can see three four membered rings and two are spirofused and then two are interconnected with a double bond two are interconnected with a double bond then what you have to do is just to treat with mcpba okay this mcpba will give the corresponding epoxide this epoxide as i said when you treat with lewis acid okay when you treat with lewis acid it undergoes so first it will coordinate with bf3 okay then it will open up and this bond migrates so that will give you the corresponding five membered ring if you look at this molecule now there are three spirofused rings two are four membered rings and here if you see the spiro system as a four and five membered fused is a very interesting system okay next you have to introduce a methyl group next to ketone then add either methyl lithium or methyl grignard so lda methyl iodide you can introduce a methyl group then followed by addition of methyl lithium will give the tertiary alcohol so this is the key precursor just before the acid catalyzed rearrangement so when he did carry out the acid catalyzed rearrangement he got isocomine as well as another product so how isocomine was formed first as you know protonation will take place so when the water goes you get 
the tertiary carbocation. Once the tertiary car carbocation is formed, then automatically one of the bonds of the spirofused four membered ring should migrate. And this migration of this bond will give you another 5 membered ring. So, now what happens? Earlier, this 5 membered ring and this 4 membered ring are spirofused. Now, after this, they are linearly fused. So, that leads to another carbocation that also can trigger the migration of the bond from 4 membered ring. As you know, 4 membered rings are not that stable. So, that is a key thing which trigger the migration of uh, bonds. Once that happens, now you can see what you got is angular tricunane system, angular tricunane system, but still it is not leading to isocobin. You are getting an angular tricunane structure, but it is not the isocobin. So, once you have a tertiary carbocation here, you have a quaternary center adjacent position. From the quaternary center, one of the methyl groups can migrate. So, when, when one of the methyl group migrates, what you get is another tertiary carbocation. Okay. And if it loses a proton, if it just loses a proton, there are two possibilities that it can lead to exocyclic double bond or endocyclic double bond. Of course, since it is treated with acid, then possibility of getting exocyclic double bond is high. So, that is how he got isocobin as the major product. Okay. So, this is a very, very interesting total synthesis starting with uh, you know uh, acetone and then do Wittig reaction with bromocyclobutane derived elide and you get spirofused, 3 spirofused ring and then simple acid catalyst rearrangement gives you the natural product. Wagner Mirwin rearrangement and 2 plus 2 cycloaddition as key reactions. So, in summary, so this uh, total synthesis was reported um, about 10 years after Michael Perenck's uh, total synthesis of isocomine and it started with acetone and uh, the key reactions involved in this are 2 plus 2 cycloaddition and acid catalyzed wagner maybe type rearrangement. Overall, this whole synthesis took 9 linear steps and overall yield was about 6.6 percent. Okay. So, I will stop here and then I will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, various triquinanes in the next uh, maybe 7 to 8 lectures because there are many total synthesis of uh, uh, triquinanes and each synthesis use at least uh, 2 key reactions. Some of them are completely different than the other total synthesis. So, this way when we talk about total synthesis of various triquinanes, we will learn lot of new chemistry. Okay? So, thank you. <laughs>